Well, good afternoon and welcome, everyone. This is an open meeting of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board on November 25, 2014. We want to welcome you who have joined us today in person or listening to the webcast of this meeting. Today, the Board will consider recommendations to adopt a strategic plan for 2014 through 2018 and to approve the PCAOB's 2015 budget in accordance with Section 109B of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act of 2002. Before we proceed with the agenda, I want to note for the record that all Board members are present or are participating by telephone. The only order of business before the Board today are staff recommendations that the Board adopt a strategic plan for fiscal years 2014 through 2018 and approve the proposed budget for fiscal year 2015. Under Section 109B of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, the Board is required to establish a budget for each fiscal year no later than one month prior to the beginning of the fiscal year and to submit it to the Securities and Exchange Commission for approval. As the Board's fiscal year follows the calendar year, we are here today to meet that requirement. And to, prevent the staff's, to present the staff's recommendations, I will turn to our Chief Administrative Officer, Suzanne Kinzer. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Board. Amy Hargret, Jim Hearn, and I are pleased to present for your consideration and approval the 2014 and 2018 strategic plan and the 2015 budget of $250.9 million. The strategic plan before you is a result of an organization-wide effort that began early this year and reflects your foresight, views, and guidance as to the direction of the PCAOB. The plan also reflects thoughtful contributions from the PCAOB's divisions and offices and includes performance measures in conformance with the SEC's budget rule. This document serves as a foundation for the 2015 budget. Amy will present an overview of the process and Jim will provide highlights of the strategic plan <coughs> and the 2015 budget. I concur with the forthcoming recommendation that the board approve both documents. Before I turn to Amy, I would like to extend a special thanks to Amy Hargret, Jim Hearn, Yas Masagian, and Bobby Rose for their extraordinary efforts. I also want to thank the divisions and offices for their generous and valuable assistance, and of course, each of you and your staff for your support and direction throughout the strategic planning and budgeting processes. I will now hand it over to Amy. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. Good afternoon, Chairman Doty, Board Members Frenzel, Ferguson, Harris, and Hanson. It's good to be here today to talk to you about the 2015 budget. As you know, the PCOB's budget process is a rigorous one. It began back in March of this year with the submission of our 2015 Budget Outlook Letter to the SEC. That was followed in April by the SEC's Letter of Budgetary Guidance and Economic Assumptions. Between May and June, we went about a process of seeking input from you and each of our offices and divisions and formulated a draft budget by midsummer. That draft budget was submitted to the SEC in July. And between September and October, we met with SEC staff to discuss the budget and to answer specific questions posed by the SEC. Following that, we continue to work with you and each of our offices and divisions to develop the budget that is before you today. As I said at the beginning of my remarks, the budget process is indeed a rigorous one, and it requires the collective efforts of many of the people in this room. I thank each of you who have helped us in this process, and I want to particularly thank the members of my team that Suzanne has also mentioned, Jeannie Bainey, Jim Hearn, Yas Masagian, and Bobby Rose. I'll turn it over to Jim for highlights of the strategic plan and the 2015 budget. Lastly, I agree with the forthcoming recommendations to approve both documents. Jim. Thank you, Amy. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as indicated, I'm here to provide a brief overview of the board's strategic plan for 2014 to 2018 and the budget for 2015. Since the strategic plan serves as the foundation for the formulation of the budget, I'll start with that. The plan before you today refines and supersedes the strategic plan the board approved this time last year. 
consistent with last year's plan, this plan continues to have overarching goals around the PCOB's knowledge in conducting effective oversight and our impact and our people. In updating the plan, we work with the full board and the divisions and offices to develop several new strategies and revise existing strategies. We also sought input and feedback from the SEC staff. A draft of the plan was provided to the staff, SEC staff in midsummer, and working with the board, we incorporated the SEC's comments as appropriate. Also, consistent with prior plans and with the SEC's budget rule, the 2014 to 2018 strategic plan includes numerous quantitative performance measures and qualitative indicators that are intended to assist the PCAOB in ascertaining its progress towards achieving its mission. I now turn to the 2015 budget. As in prior years, the budget for 2015 is organized so that the activities and resource needs of each division and office are directly mapped to the goals, objectives, and strategies in the strategic plan. As Suzanne stated, the proposed budget for 2015 is $250.9 million. This budget represents a 3% decrease from the PCAOB's 2014 budget of $258.4 million, but there are several other comparison points uh, to point out. Uh, the 2015 budget, uh, because it was subject to sequestration, was reduced to $252 million. The 20, that was the 2014 budget, and that was our revised spending plan. The 2015 budget is approximately 0.6%, 1.5 million, lower than that revised spending plan. In addition, the 2015 budget is, it represents an 8% or $18.5 million increase over the amount we currently project that will be spent in 2014 approximately $232 million. Let me run down the largest components of our 2015 budget in terms of the cost categories and each co category's portion of the total budget. The largest is personnel, that's salaries, benefits, taxes, training, and recruitment and relocation, which accounts for roughly 76% of the PCAOB's expenses in 2015. Rent and facilities, not including the associated personnel costs, accounts for 8%. Travel accounts for 6%. Consulting and professional fees account for 4%. And information technology, without associated personnel costs, accounts for another 4%. Now let me provide some details on the amounts associated with each of these categories. With regard to personnel, which represents $191 million in 2015, the budget assumes a total end-of-year headcount of 851 employees. This is 36 more than what we currently project at the end of 2014, which is 815. The 36 positions are allocated to the following divisions and offices. Nine for the Office of Administration, eight positions for the Division of Registration and Inspections, seven positions for the Center for Economic Analysis, four for the Division of Enforcement Investigations, three positions for the Office of Information Technology, and one position each for the following offices, Research and Analysis, the Office of General Counsel, International Affairs, Outreach and Small Business Liaison, and the Office of Public Affairs. For rent and facilities, the 2015 budget includes $19.5 million. This amount covers both our long-term space needs and anticipated rent increases at many of our locations. For travel, the 2015 budget includes $14.3 million. Uh, next year, we expect that staff will take about 5,200 trips over the year with inspections-related trips accounting for about 84% of all of those trips. In 2015, the budget includes $10.9 million for consulting and professional fees. And for information technology, the budget includes $9 million for costs not related to personnel or IT consulting. If you include staff compensation and consulting costs in the Office of Information Technology, the total budget for that office is $25 million. All of the above activities are funded through the accounting support fee levied on issuers and broker-dealers. The accounting support fee associated with the 2015 budget is $226.6 million. This amount is lower than the 2015 budget because we now estimate 
that actual spending in 2014 will be less than we had budgeted a year ago. This underspend will fund a portion of our spending needs for 2015. The accounting support fee for issuers and broker-dealers is $199.1 million and $27.5 million, respectively. The budget also assumes the board will continue to have five months of operating resources for early 2016 in its working capital reserve. Separately, I should note that the PCOB continues to be subject, subject to the sequester process that was put into motion by the Budget Control Act of 2011. The sequestration order for 2015, which was issued on March 10, 2014, requires the PCAOB to sequester $17 million in 2015. Since we, PCAOB held aside $18 million during 2014 to comply with the 2014 sequester, the $1 million difference now reduces the 2015 ASF by $1 million. We will, of course, continue to keep you apprised if any sequestration-related developments occur next year. The development of the strategic plan and the budget was an organization-wide effort, and so I need to quickly note my appreciation of all those who have contributed to it as well. In particular, I would like to thank Suzanne and Amy, Bill Wiggins, Jeannie Bainey, Yas Msagian, and Bobby Rose for their assistance and support, which has been invaluable to me. We also received significant support from the board councils, especially Samantha Ross and George Bodick, as well as from division and office leaders, who, as always, are highly responsive to the tight deadlines required of the budget process. In addition, we greatly appreciate the support provided by each of you. With that, Mr. Chairman, I formally recommend the board approve the 2014-2018 strategic plan and the 2015 budget and my colleagues and I are happy to answer any questions you or the board may have. Thank you. The 2015 budget and related strategic plan are the result, as you've heard, of considerable effort and thought by board members and senior programmatic staff. I want to express my appreciation for the efforts of our Chief Administrative Officer, Suzanne Kenzer, and our Chief Financial Officer, Amy Hargret, who are both new in their roles this year. I also want to thank Budget Officer Jim Hearn, Yost Masagian, and Bobby Rose from our Budget Office. You've all done wonderful things in the past few weeks. Since November 2013, when the Board last updated its five-year strategic plan, we've made substantial progress on the objectives and the initiatives described in our strategic plan. This new plan and the 2015 budget together allow us to redouble our efforts on a number of key strategies to achieve our mission. In particular, the new plan and budget will allow us to deepen the PCOB's use of data, information technology, and economic analysis in standard setting and other activities. That capacity will promote more fluid interaction among the PCAOB's <coughs> programs in order to better leverage data and insights obtained through its programs. We will also continue to expand the interim broker-dealer audit inspection program while working to establish the permanent program. Let me say a word about economics. In November 2013, we formed a Center for Economic Analysis. We've begun to staff the center with both permanent staff and research fellows, and we're now poised to deepen our use of economic analysis in all our programs, particularly the area of standard setting, as well as to spur economic research on the role of auditing in capital markets and capital formation. Economic considerations underlie the audit, but we need to know more about the levers that move audit incentives. Last week, a meeting of our standing advisory group heard from panels of academics, auditors, and forensic experts on the general topic of the relationship of the audit and the auditor to fraud, both detection and prevention. The auditor incentives and disincentives were discussed in detail. The slides of those presentations went up on our website today. That SAG meeting was a direct response to what we heard as a growing public interest in deeper study by regulation of the conditions that spawned fraud, the pressures auditors face, and the possible levers to counter those pressures. <clears throat> Regulators <clears throat> need to be mindful of the economic impact of their own actions. For example, I'm mindful that new audit procedures and quality control measures increase cost, which may be passed on to other market participants. Regulators need to know these and other economic effects in order to, to determine whether and what actions may most effectively and efficiently meet stated objectives. 
Economics provides us a framework for that critical thinking. It prompts us to consider alternatives to maximize the efficiency of our actions. A near-term focus in 2015 will be further integration of economic analysis into the PCAOB's programs and further improvements in our standard-setting program. We are now in a position to reflect upon our more than 10 years of experience in setting auditing standards and refine our processes to achieve the most effective outcomes. For example, our new tools in economics will help us build a program to conduct post-implementation review of standards. We will also look for ways we can build more data collection and analysis into our processes. To this end, we've already begun to use new outreach techniques to gather information earlier in our standard setting process through the staff consultation paper. We started this past summer with an OCA staff consultation paper to seek public input on the need and alternatives to address problems in auditing fair value estimates. That paper led in short order to a thought-provoking meeting of our standing advisor group in early October to explore questions raised in the paper with outstanding panels of experts from a variety of fields. We can expect additional consultation papers soon on two additional critical auditing topics, the going concern assumption and the use of specialists. We also need to make good use of our own internal information, including information gleaned from the nearly 300 inspections and numerous investigations that we will conduct next year, both in the U.S. and abroad, as well as our risk assessment and other oversight programs. With the help of empirical skills from staff in the center, I'm hopeful we will be able to develop a better sense of the baseline in practice, which will in turn help us determine where we need to focus on compliance and where we should lift the standard for everyone. Well, we have great expectations of 2015. 2015 will bring more outreach to audit committees, more attention to the means of helping audit committees become effective in overseeing the audit. 2015 will also see a concept release on audit quality indicators. Finally, I remain hopeful that early in 2015 we will achieve greater transparency and execution of the audit through publication of engagement partner identity and other participants in the audit. I'm immensely proud of the PCAOB staff for their creativity in developing new techniques to bring to bear in their work, as well as their commitment to identifying the most effective ways to protect investors. The 2015 budget is noted as lower than our 2014 budget, reflecting challenges we face in hiring. The 2015 budget provides for a conservative increase in staff, primarily in inspections, in light of that hiring challenge. But the budget also provides our new administrative leadership with the resources they need to refresh and upgrade our human resources, finance, and facilities functions, and to bring us to a more sustainable model. Given all the work and the support that has gone into the budget, I'm comfortable that it is an appropriate budget and it should be submitted to the SEC for its approval. And I want to turn now to my fellow board members for statements they may wish to make. As has become our custom, we'll withhold questions until all board members have had a chance to make a statement. Then we'll have time for questions and discussion. So first I wish to call on Board Member Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the 2015 budget uh, reflects a compromise amongst board priorities and resources, and I believe it represents a reasonable approach to meeting the goals spelled out in the 2014-2018 strategic plan and fulfilling our mandate, uh, and I support it. And I also want to touch on a number of accomplishments during 2014 and some of the priorities reflected in the strategic plan, uh, which I particularly support. In the strategic plan, the board appropriately stresses the importance of continuing the focus on the independence, objectivity, and professional skepticism of the auditor. As framed in the strategic plan, I agree that we need to continue to carefully monitor and analyze the business models of the largest firms to ensure that audit quality and auditor independence are not compromised as the largest firms expand into additional lines of business. Improving audit quality and ensuring auditor independence must remain top priorities as the firms grow their consulting and advisory services. I further support the board examining whether certain kinds of tax consulting services create conflicts of interest that may impair auditor independence. The strategic plan makes clear that we will continue to hold auditors accountable for violations of our auditing standards and independence rules during inspections and as part of our enforcement oversight. 
I likewise support the PCOB's continuing its outreach to audit committees and constructively engaging with them in areas of common interest, including auditor independence, audit quality, and PCOB inspection findings. The PCOB, as with other audit regulators around the world, remains concerned about the continued high number of observed audit deficiencies, and improving audit quality continues to be the underlying theme throughout the strategic plan. As referenced in the strategic plan, the Board has an active standard setting agenda. For example, in August 2014, the PCOB issued for public comment a staff consultation paper on standard setting activities related to auditing accounting estimates and fair value measurements. I support this project as well as the Board's ongoing initiatives to improve our audit quality control standards. In this regard, I continue to believe the Board should focus on the failure to supervise provisions of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. I further support the consideration of whether independent non-executives should be required on the governance boards of firms, something that is currently required in a number of other jurisdictions. I also support the Board's priority to identify audit quality indicators. The goal is to promote competition based on audit quality amongst the firms and develop concise summary reporting on the state of audit quality and other relevant information about auditing. This important initiative should be of considerable value not only to the PCOB, but to audit committees, auditors, investors, and companies alike. Uh, this issue is also of important importance to regulators around the world. <clears throat> Last December, the Board published for comment a proposal to expand the current auditor's reporting model, and in April 2014, we held a public roundtable on the subject. This project, which involves examining possible changes to the auditor's report, is consistent with the Board's mandate to further the public interest in the preparation of informative, accurate, and independent audit results. Likewise, we should adopt the Board's initiative on transparency and the identification of the engagement partner in the audit report. I look forward to the Board successfully concluding both these projects as soon as possible in the new year. I note that such transparency is already com common practice in much of the world, as is a modified audit report. The current proposal on the auditor's reporting model includes enhancements to clearly indicate the auditor's responsibilities for fraud. Investors want and expect the auditor to detect and expose fraud. As the strategic plan notes, in the coming year, the PCOB will work to develop economic analyses that focus on external economic factors that cause potential fraud pressures and risks. This work will be done through the collaborative efforts of the PCOB Center for Economic Analysis and the Office of Chief Auditor. In early 2014, the PCOB staff issued staff guidance on economic analysis in PCOB standard setting. Under this guidance, each of the board's proposed standards would address the following elements. One, the need for the proposed action. Two, the baseline against which to measure the likely economic consequences of the proposed regulation. Three, the alternative regulatory approaches considered. And four, an evaluation of the economic impact, including the benefits and costs, both quantitative and qualitative, of the proposed action and the main alternatives identified by the analysis. The Board also considers whether the proposed action is in the public interest, whether it will protect investors, and if it promotes efficiency, competition, and capital formation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as you noted, the Board's Center for Economic Analysis was formed earlier this year as well. The Center is designed to enhance the role of analysis in and of our programs, whether in providing pr perspectives on proposed actions or helping to structure post-implementation reviews of our standards. I'm particularly interested in the Center's project to catalog the potential uses of the data the Board already has and explore what additional data we may need to enhance our inspection and standard setting processes, as well as to carefully consider the potential costs and benefits of the Board's programs. Each year, as you mentioned, the Board strives to improve its oversight activities in many ways, including through an examination of our data. For example, in 2014, the Division of Registration and Inspections continued to aggregate the findings in our inspection reports for large and small firms in a compendium for internal use and analysis. Strengthening the analysis of our data and processes through the use of sophisticated information technology and data management tools as envisioned in the strategic plan will contribute positively 
to the effectiveness of our oversight programs. Uh, with respect to the Board's remediation determinations, I support our efforts to improve the timeliness of the Board's remediation determinations, which the strategic plan notes is one of the Board's near-term priorities. Uh, with respect to the broker-dealer program, we're making considerable progress in developing a regulatory and operational infrastructure to carry out our oversight authority for broker-dealer auditors as authorized under the Dodd-Frank Act. And on the international front, I would like to acknowledge the PCOB's continued work uh, with our international regulatory counterparts with the goal of achieving greater access to cross-border inspections. In 2014, the PCOB entered into cooperation agreements with Sweden and Denmark, bringing the total number of cooperative agreements reached with non-U.S. auditor oversight authorities to 18. I view this as a significant achievement I would like to commend you, Mr. Chairman, and our Office of International Affairs under the leadership of Bruce Wilson uh, for the Board's successes in this area. Uh, the strategic plan also appropriately focuses and highlights the Board's ongoing efforts on reinforcing quality control of the global network firms. Uh, in considering and finalizing the Board's 2015 budget, which must now be approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission, I believe the Board has carefully assessed and continues to assess the growth of the PCOB with an eye toward reaching a steady state level in its budget. The Board understands the need to reasonably achievable, to reasonably achievable activity and provide justification of its spending and to carefully oversee its divisions and offices. And I believe this budget responsibly represents that effort. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I join you uh, in congratulating and thanking all the Board member staff uh, and the staff of the uh, administration, the general counsel's office, the office of the secretary, uh, in, in what has been a constructive dialogue in achieving this end result. And I would ask that my full statement be submitted for the record. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, for the first time in which this board has met, we have uh, a board member participating remotely, uh, Mr. Ferguson, Lewis Ferguson. <coughs> this year's budget reflects a small decrease compared with last year's planned spending amount, which suggests to me that the PCAOB is close to being fully resourced for its mission. Our budgets have generally increased annually since inception in 2003, and I'm glad to see that those increases have begun to tail off. The PCAOB continues to face challenges in finding and hiring the highly specialized and in-demand talent that we need to carry out our mission. In 2015, we'll be focusing on enhancing, enhancing our ability to attract and retain the highest quality talent. And although it might seem contradictory on first view, to the extent that the organization is viewed by prospective employees as a valuable step in career progression for auditors and other professionals, I believe we will be in a better position to attract some of the most desirable potential employees. In addition to being a desirable employer for long-term employees, as a sophisticated employer carrying out an important mission, if we provide excellent training and a broad experience to our professionals, we should expect them to also become desirable hires for others. I've been encouraged, funnily enough, to see a number of our employees this quarter being recruited for opportunities elsewhere in public service with regulated auditors and with issuers. While this poses difficulties for us in keeping our workforce fully staffed in the short run, I believe that over time, such opportunities for our staff will allow us to attract and keep the most qualified applicants and to be perceived in the job market as a particularly desirable place to work. This year's budget also includes increased funding for a new initiative, the Center for Economic Analysis, that was commenced in 2014. And that aims, among other things, to build our capacity to bring sophisticated academic and other resources to bear on economic analysis. This year, the Center was able to hire the first two academic fellows who will conduct research using the PCAOB's proprietary database. It also began an inventory of the various data resources housed within the PCAOB and convened an academic conference of more than 100 participants at which a number of papers examined issues relevant to auditors and audit oversight. And these papers were presented and discussed. Now, I support the concept behind and the mission of the center, but I believe that at least in its initial stages, 
the center needs to be closely monitored by the board to assure that its missions and activities remain consistent with the overall mission of the PCAOB. For example, the 2015 budget proposes expenditures for the center that are triple the amount actually expended by the center in 2014 and proposes an increase in headcount from 6 to 13, including two new economists to work on standard setting. In approving the preliminary budget, the board insisted that future research fellows and the topics of their research need to be approved in advance by the board, and I believe that the board needs to be closely involved in overseeing and approving the proposed expansion of the center. In order to facilitate economic analysis that we are applying to our standard setting activities, and more generally to a number of our areas of activity, we've hired a number of economists. The PCAOB's economists are now spread among the Office of Research and Analysis, the Office of the Chief Auditor, and the Center for Economic Analysis. I believe that the dispersion of the economists throughout the organization in this fashion may raise questions of coordination and supervision, and that the board must be vigilant to ensure that the program's design is best suited to meet our objectives of strong economic analysis, and that there is not duplication of effort or unproductive conflicting analysis and views. With these caveats, I support the 2015 budget and believe that it provides an appropriate level of resources to achieve the board's mission and its ongoing activities. And I want to thank our staff for its extraordinary work and also thank the staff of the SEC for their helpful comments and uh, uh, testing of our, of our assumptions. So with that, I'm done. Thank you, Lewis. Jay Hansen? Uh, thank you and good afternoon. Um, so I've got a statement I'll, uh, I'll be posting, and I'm not going to read every single word of it since many of the words have been said by others. Um, uh, and uh, Jim Hearn did a good job of uh, recounting the, um, uh, the different numbers, but I will observe that this 2015 budget is probably the most conservative during my tenure on the board in that it uh, reflects very little headcount um, uh, or, or spending growth. And, and Jim highlighted the, the ups and downs that were down compared to last year's budget. We're up by 8% compared to what we expect to spend in 2015, or excuse me, 2014. And all this translates into a reduced um, uh, accounting support fee, which is what issuers and broker dealers pay us to uh, fund our operations by approximately 10%, which uh, for them they will undoubtedly think that is good news. Um, in some respects, I think of this year's budget as being a little bit of a reset by the board. And as we continue to learn from our experience and we're trying to refine not only the board's needs to achieve its statutory mission, but uh, also taking into account the reality of what we can accomplish, including in terms of hiring and access to international firms for inspections. As we did at the end of 2013, we find ourselves in a situation in 2014 of having spent less than the uh, uh, approved budget and revised spending plan. My goal for 2015, or my personal hope, is that we um, we spend about what we're budgeting, uh, and um, I think we've got a much better shot at doing that um, uh, this year. Uh, hiring, as has been noted by several uh, of us here at the table, is in a particular challenge for us uh, throughout our existence, but even more so in, in 2014. So any, any um, uh, accountants that are out there listening, uh, we are still hiring, so we need some good, uh, good people. Um, Along with the economic recovery following the financial crisis, uh, competition for qualified folks that we're looking for have uh, increased substantially um, from the firms and, and issuers. And we're taking a close look at our headcount expectations for 2015 and proposing modest increases for next year in the most important mission-related areas. I'm also cognizant of the fact that we are spending other people's money. Uh, as we do every year, we have scrutinized all aspects of the budget to make sure that our projections are reasonable in light of our needs and, uh, and our ability to actually perform. In addition to headcount, estimating the appropriate level of certain types of consulting professional fees, such as uh, those costs for translation services, legal services, expert witnesses, can be a challenge. This year's budget reflects reductions in several of those areas compared to the 2014 budget. Uh, finally, along with our adjusting a budget to uh, better reflect past spending, I uh, hope that we're approaching a steady state uh, uh, budget for the PCOB. I, as we look to the future, I think we will see some modest uh, uh, spending and staffing increases uh, in the next few years, and we certainly need to enhance our uh, analysis of the data and, and improve the timeliness of some of our activities. Uh, but um, uh, I think we can do that with, uh, with some modest uh, uh, increases. And we also have tough decisions ahead of us on the scope of our, our uh, permanent broker-dealer inspection program, which will uh, um, drive the uh, uh, headcount in that 
program as well. So barring any, any uh, significant legislative uh, changes to our mandate, I'm guessing that we won't have any dramatic increases during the time that I'm sitting here as a board member. Um, at one of the adverse impacts on our 2015 budget uh, and keeping it flat in the modest hiring goals is the challenge of getting the work done. And I appreciate the challenges that our st staff uh, face every day in this area. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, um, I believe they're up to the task. So just a couple comments on the strategic plan. Uh, the three overarching goals, effective oversight, constructive impact, dedicated people. Um, those strategies and overarching goals remain consistent with uh, the past plans and uh, some of the particular tactics and strategies have been refined. So overall, I believe the strategic plan uh, is a holistic approach to enhancing audit quality, including a focus on the root cause analysis of auditor behavior, both positive and negative, uh, the remediation of inspection findings, our work in quality control, and the audit <coughs> performance um, uh, standards. Uh, I would personally like to see the board focus more on identifying and communicating the things that seem to be working well so that others can uh, learn from that. So the best practices in audit e execution. We also want to continue the focus on the board's priorities first introduced in late um, 2012 as near-term priorities. We've made some progress on every front, inspection reports, remediation, audit quality indicators, data aggregation and analysis, audit committee outreach, and standard setting. So I'd like to thank the staff for their efforts in, efforts in this area. However, more remains to be done, so I will ask the staff to continue their creative thinking and good work. Among other things, I think the board should take a look at its standard setting process to determine whether steps could be taken to enhance the effectiveness and timeliness. I'd also like to see the board provide more timely information to the public about our inspection findings and our experience in the root cause analysis and remediation. I'm hopeful that our Office of Research and Analysis can soon begin to seek input on its most promising audit quality indicators uh, in that project and their possible uses. And finally, in the area of audit committee outreach, I, along with several of my fellow board members, continue to seek opportunities to interact with stakeholders, including audit committees, investors, financial statement preparers, and others. We also continue to focus on the challenge of conducting economic research on proposed new auditing standards. I believe this is a very important and substantive undertaking that should not be limited to just new auditing standards, but should also be applied to other types of new rule proposals. We should also constantly challenge whether we're basing our analysis on the appropriate baseline. Staff in our Office of Chief Auditor and the Office of Research and Analysis have diligently dedicated themselves to learning about this important area and educating the rest of us on economic principles, which I understand is a challenge. Uh, we are also um, uh, learning to incorporate more rigorous considerations of costs and benefits into our thinking, and our economists have enhanced their understanding of the audit process, potential benefits of enhancements to auditing standards, and the potential impact of our activities on accounting firms, issuers, and broker-dealers. The coming year should present us with new opportunities to incorporate our learning into the standard-setting process and expect our analysis will continue to improve. Finally, I would like to comment, as my fellow board members have, on our new uh, Center for Economic Analysis. The center was established with the goal of applying economic theory to improve the effectiveness of the PCAOB, including by analyzing our programs from an economic perspective, facilitating economic research on the role and revel relevance of the audit in capital markets, and to help us develop empirical tools for use in our uh, oversight programs. We have expired, uh, hired experienced economists to run the Center and our first economic research fellows have joined the PCAOB. The center also held the academic conference as uh, we talked about earlier in late October. Now that the center has commenced operations, the board needs to further define the center's role within the PCAOB, ensuring the center's activities complement the board's mission and the work of its other offices and divisions without creating duplication. This is particularly important now that we have three different offices within the PCOB with their own economists on staff, each with a slightly different purpose. The board will need to review and evaluate the center's mission statement and activities plan and establish specific performance metrics to ensure the center's activities prioritize the board's primary function. While the 2015 uh, budget includes funds to more than double the center's staff, I join my fellow board members in their concern that we need to approve what, uh, what the, the center's uh, mission and plans are before we go and actually spend that, uh, that money. Uh, the board also needs to take a look at its staff economists holistically in determining whether appropriate structure and reporting relationships for its economists to best serve the needs of the interests of the board are really in place. 
So I will just close with thanking uh, the staff uh, again, uh, Amy, Suzanne, uh, Jeannie, your first time through this and you've uh, endured a lot and I, I thank you for your effort on that. Jim, you're a veteran now that this is your third or fourth time through this and, and your, your great staff that, uh, that put up with us in all of our questions. I really appreciate all the efforts that they've put into it. Thanks. Jennifer Franchel. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I also have a statement that I'll be posting, so I'm not going to go through all of that uh, right here, but I do want to hit a few points. Um, first of all, I want to say that I support the proposed uh, 2015 budget and the strategic plan that you all are presenting to us today. Um, and I really want to commend you for your work. Uh, we have an unbelievably difficult and cumbersome process to uh, to produce this budget, um, and I'm happy to, to support you in whatever efforts you want to make to try to streamline the process. But I do believe that it's a very good result. Um, and so, again, thanks for all of your hard work. And I'm, I'm very pleased that, in fact, uh, this process is resulting in a more conservative approach to budgeting because uh, if you look at the history of PCAOB, PCAOB has a history of very aggressive growth goals and that was sort of the mode for budgeting and that was part of the reason for large underspends year after year after year. So I'm pleased to see the trend uh, switching a bit this year where even though we're um, the budget represents a 7.9% increase uh, over the 2014 spending, uh, the budget is actually lower than, you know, the approved budgets for uh, 2014. So I see that as a turning point and a good sign, um, and I'm pleased to see the levels of growth beginning to come down as we look to try to stabilize as an organization, and I know we'll probably have to continue to refine uh, those budget assumptions and other approaches uh, next year as well. Um, even though I think that we need to start looking at stabilizing, we still do have a lot of remaining needs that we are budgeting for in various programs and initiatives, and those are all uh, listed throughout the strategic plan. Um, and, and other board members have mentioned some of the, the initiatives that we need to continue to develop um, and complete, so I will not uh, go through those. Um, we also need to continue on some of the programmatic improvements that we've been working on here for several years. Um, and as other board members have mentioned, uh, you know, we, we began some of those improvements in 2012. We dubbed those the board's near-term priorities, and we've made a lot of progress, um, and we still have a lot more work to do. And I won't go through uh, all of them today, just a few. Uh, but I do want to uh, comment on our strategic planning uh, process. You know, we've continued to make uh, improvements in that process as well, along with the budget process. And Frankly, I think we've really strengthened our controls um, and the outcome of these activities. And so, again, I commend the staff uh, for that. Um, and as you consider to continuing to evolve this process as the organization uh, evolves. Along the lines of strategic planning, uh, the budget, uh, the board still needs to work on uh, various uh, performance measures and how to monitor the effectiveness of uh, the board's efforts and the organization's efforts to achieve its mission and to achieve the various objectives and strategies uh, in the strategic plan. So I look forward uh, to working with the staff on those types of efforts as well. I do, as my other fellow board members uh, did, want to mention uh, the Center for Economic Analysis, which was established last year. Uh, I continue to support the functions of the center um, and the uh, integration of economic analysis in the work of the PCAOB. Uh, but as my fellow board members have mentioned, we still have work to do to finalize plans for the center's work uh, and to realize the potential of the center across PCAOB programs and activities. Uh, we need to clearly delineate and define how the various activities within the center support the board's mission and programs and how the economists in the center will work with the economists that we have uh, in our other offices uh, in, within the organization, the Office of Research and Analysis and the Office of Chief Auditor. I think if we don't clearly define uh, how this is going to work, we do run the risk of uh, duplication, overlap, and probably gaps uh, as well. Um, we also need to ensure that the research projects being supported by the center through its annual conference and the work of its fellows uh, will provide benefits uh, in the areas of advancing research on the role of audit in capital formation and investor protection uh, and the effect of potential PCAOB actions intended to enhance the relevance and reliability of audits. And I think the board will continue to work on some of the governance uh, issues there. 
we also need to look for ways to leverage the extensive body of research uh, being conducted by accounting and auditing researchers uh, and continue our coordination with the American Accounting Association. So we've got a lot of pieces that we really need to, to put together and figure out how to coordinate and make work effectively. Um, and as other board members have mentioned, the budget request for the center is almost triple uh, what we spent in 2014. And, and I also believe that uh, we need to uh, really work out some of these issues before we spend uh, that requested money. And I would recommend that we hold the spending uh, to a lower amount until we work out some of these very important issues, which uh, frankly uh, will help the center be successful and help PCAOB successfully uh, lev leverage the center. I just want to mention a couple of our near-term priorities uh, that we've been working on, um, and, and we've made a lot of progress in the near-term priorities, and I really want to compliment the staff throughout all the divisions and offices. Um, but the first deals with an expansion, and it, the good news is we've actually expanded some of these goals uh, as we found more and more opportunities. Uh, so one of those goals was improving the timeliness, content, and readability of inspection reports. Um, the staff has done a great job of uh, bringing uh, those reports in on a more timely basis and starting to make changes to the reports. But I think we've also discovered that we have significant opportunities in the area of providing timely and useful information to investors and our stakeholders uh, regarding our oversight activities. There's a demand for this information, and there's a demand for this information to be delivered on a very timely, real-time basis, and that's the good news. Uh, that means that this information is important and relevant to our stakeholders, uh, but we really do need to develop new approaches for disseminating uh, summary information on inspection results as soon as possible uh, during or after completion of inspection cycles so that stakeholders have information about emerging risks and trends prior to the start of the next audit cycle. Uh, in addition, we do a lot of rich uh, and deep analysis here at the PCAOB um, related to specific risks uh, in the auditing, in auditing and the audit profession generally, um, and I think providing some of this information on a summary basis uh, to the public would be very helpful in promoting audit quality uh, and protecting investors. And so I look forward to uh, the organization continuing to advance in providing relevant and timely information to really help uh, improve audit quality. And then the second area deals with um, enhancing our framework for PCAOB's standard setting process. Uh, the board continues uh, to work on that, that priority that was set in 2012, and the board continues or plans to conduct a, a, a fairly thorough review of PCAOB's standard setting function in the coming year. So I look forward uh, to working with the staff on that and really looking at how we can make our standard setting uh, function uh, efficient and effective. Um, but I also want to acknowledge the many, many uh, initiatives that we have in our strategic plan and, and the hard work of all the staff in advancing PCAOB as an organization and helping us accomplish our mission. Um, and, and it's a difficult mission, and um, I do believe the budget we're voting on today appropriately reflects our needs, and I do support the budget. And again, I want to thank all of the staff for their tremendous work uh, in advancing this organization. Well, thank you all for those comments. I should, normally, um, in these meetings, it has been our practice uh, that Brian Croto, the Deputy Chief Accountant of the SEC, uh, makes a practice of attending these meetings. I think Brian is not here today, but I have it, I have it on good authority he is listening in. Uh, at the risk of sounding a little like Arthur Godfrey used to talk about people listening into his radio show, I think that one of the things I should note is that Brian, in, in transmitting the uh, passback letter, on the PCAOB's budget, <coughs> uh, preliminary budget, uh, wrote the following, and I think that uh, you all uh, need to be the beneficiary of, of this. He says, on behalf of our SEC budget team, I'd like to express our appreciation for your team's efforts and the availability throughout the budget process. Uh, in addition to helping to satisfy important statutory oversight objectives, once again, he says, we've found that the budget process facilitates beneficial discussions between SEC and PCAOB staff. Uh, it would be um, a gap in the record of this meeting if we didn't thank Brian Croteau and the SEC staff for uh, working with us, especially in, in some of the more nimble and late night meetings that preceded this meeting today. With that, uh, question time, and I think we'll start again with questions, Jeff. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, as many of us have mentioned, this year's budget presents a more conservative plan for growth uh, than previous year's budgets. Um, and the board also needs to start thinking about achieving a steady state in terms of size and growth for the organization. Um, so if you could explain some of the main drivers that, that caused this budget estimate to be more conservative than prior uh, budget estimates, and to what extent do you see these trends continuing or changing or accelerating going forward? Sure, I'll take that, Jeanette. Thanks for the question. I think a lot has actually been said about the, um, the reduction in the budget. I think I agree with pretty much everything everyone said. Um, coming in new to this process, one of the things I wanted to do and my team joined me in this effort was to, to provide a, a high degree of scrutiny to the budget, looking at the numbers, trying to develop a process where we would actually consider our past actual spending and outreach. So there are there are several things that, that got us here. I think the, the process is part is, is really due to the data analysis, the outreach, but then we also had to consider what's been going on with headcount. And Jim talked about, and I think others talked about how big of a, a, a percentage of our budget our, our personnel costs are. Generally, they're about 75%. We've not hit our headcount goals. I think um, in developing the 2015 budget, we had to take a close look at that and try to figure out what we could actually hire and balance that out with what we actually need. As far as going forward, I think that we will continue the process that we've, been, we've begun of scrutinizing the numbers, analyzing the data, reaching out to you, reaching out to our division and office leadership, and coming up with some budgets that we think are realistic and achievable. Yeah, I think as customary, we'll, we'll go through once, we'll sweep through once, and then if there are other questions, we can come back. Jane? Okay. I just want to focus for a moment on, on the biggest driver of the budget, the, the headcount. And, and as we've talked about, the hiring challenges um, uh, are, are, are the biggest driver for why we've not been able to spend our, our budget funds. And it's one thing to admire a problem. It's another thing to solve a problem. So just some of your thoughts around what do we need to do different in the future relative to our, our hiring process to get a different result than what we had, had in the past year. Um, I'll go ahead and take that question. Um, obviously, this is an area that we've had um, lots of dialogue on internally, um, particularly over the last six months, and um, we've, we've been closely watching our um, historical actual recruiting results, and that certainly has informed the budget. But that also informs us in our thinking in terms of how we go forward. And so one of the things that the um, 2015 budget assumes is that we will be going through a strategic recruiting assessment. And so I think that in 2015 we can expect a high degree of reliance on external agencies, um, but I think at the same time we will also embark on a strategic recruiting assessment and hopefully we will learn something um, from that process in terms of how um, the organization <coughs> can continue to evolve its processes in response to making our processes more efficient and effective. Thanks. Mr. Ferguson, Lewis, any questions? Are you on mute? Right, hey, yes. Yeah, right. Right. You muted. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. You only could send me a um, note saying that I was annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think in that. Any case, <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, I have a question about uh, inspections and particularly about our foreign inspections. I'd like to know the amount that is being budgeted next year for foreign inspections, and what proportion is that of a total of the total inspection budget, and is that uh, has that gone up or gone down uh, over prior years? So it's really not a compound question. Sarah Williams, are you available to answer? Thank you. I will give it a shot. Um, the 2015 budget is based on the assumption that we will conduct 61 non-U.S. inspections of firms located in 26 countries. Our 2015 budget includes the inspections of three jurisdictions where we were previously unable to inspect. Uh, those are Hungary, Portugal, and Denmark. Uh, to address Lou's question, I don't fully have all the numbers. That might take some time, some work between myself and OA, but I can give you a brief perspective through percentages. Um, the 61 non-U.S. firms that are budgeted represent 28% 
of the total number of firms that we expect to inspect during 2015 and 22% of the portions of audits that we will look at during the inspection year. These 61 non-U.S. inspections comprise 14% of the total staff time allocated to performing inspections and represent 21% of the total number of trips that we intend to make to perform inspections. So as I said, we'll get back to, we can get back to you with more concrete data, but I hope that gives you a good idea of the percentage of division time and uh, activities that will be spent on non-U.S. inspections. It's part of what the information I would like to get, if I could, if the time you get me, is just a sense of how disproportionately expensive these uh, inspections are, particularly given travel or translation or other kinds of things. But, but yes, that, that's very helpful, so thank you. Steve. I believe that this is a fiscally responsible budget, uh, given the underspending that we've historically uh, had in the past, and I think that other board members and you have addressed this issue, uh, and I also uh, support the movement toward a steady state uh, to the extent possible, given the growth and the underspending and the, uh, the staffing in the past. I'm wondering, though, uh, how much flexibility does the board have uh, to meet potentially any unforeseen needs? I'll take that one. Um, under the, the SEC's budget rule, uh, each division office can spend a million dollars more than the budgeted amount if we can get it from some other uh, division or office or combination of divisions and offices in the PCAOB, um, and that's, some fl that's the flexibility that we're allowed under the budget rule. Jeanette? I want to thank Lou for asking that question on the non-U.S. inspections and uh, for the data that I think was probably pulled together uh, on short notice, and I look forward to getting more information and analysis on that. Um, I have no further questions, and again, I want to thank the staff for all of your efforts. Thank you. Jay, uh, I'm going to pass on any further questions, too. I just want to reiterate the thanks to all the hard work that's gone into this. Lewis? Uh, no further questions, mm -hmm. and again, thanks mm -hmm. to the staff for your extraordinary work. Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I have a final question. That is, uh, I'm interested in deliverables uh, in, in terms of 2015, and, and I see that we've got uh, Marty, you're here, and, and Nirov, and uh, Claudius, uh, and uh, actually Greg. Uh, so could you each uh, tell us uh, what you anticipate to be the deliverables uh, and what you hope to accomplish uh, by year end 2015? So uh, I'll go first. Uh, Marty Bauman. Um, we will continue, first of all, uh, in terms of supporting other divisions, we'll continue to review all inspection reports uh, to, de to determine that the inspection findings are consistent with uh, PCOB standards and, uh, and answering questions with inspectors have out in the field about standards. So a lot of our time is spent uh, supporting inspections. Also enforcement actions, uh, enforcement also looks to us uh, for interpretations of standards to ensure that they're going about their actions and uh, considering our standards in the right way, so that's certainly an ongoing important activity. <coughs> From a standard setting perspective, uh, as mentioned uh, by some board members, we'll work with the board in terms of looking at ways to continue to enhance our standard setting capabilities, uh, especially as a in connection with uh, working with the uh, requirements of our economic analysis to demonstrate uh, the need for the standard, understanding of the baseline, uh, alternatives to standard setting, and the economic impacts of potential rules we might put forth, including costs and benefits. Uh, new requirements uh, added to standard setting in the last couple of years that are certainly uh, uh, important to rulemaking, but certainly a challenge to uh, develop those in terms of a standard setting framework but we'll work with the board in all aspects of, of enhancing that standard setting framework, including economic analysis. Uh, during the past year, we, as was mentioned uh, in some remarks, we have developed, I think, a new useful tool, uh, to, especially with respect to the performance obligations, where we want to look at some of our, our standards, um, and that is the use of a staff consultation paper. So we had been working with the board in terms of potential proposals in a number of areas, but it became clear in our view that it was, more information was needed before we could put forth proposals uh, that the board could, could vote on. And so uh, the staff consultation paper that was issued uh, this past summer in connection with auditing and counting estimates and fair value measurements was an initial first success 
in the use of that type of a paper to, to get extensive outreach. We've received an, a lot of comment letters back on it. And as was mentioned, we also had uh, an excellent SAG meeting which discussed that paper. That now is giving us, us a, gives us a much better uh, jumping off point for developing an auditing standard or updates to our auditing standards pertaining to accounting estimates and fair value measurements, the most critical aspects of an audit as most financial statements are just filled with accounting estimates and, and fair value measurements. So this is an enormously big project, enormously important project, and through the staff consultation paper, we think we've learned a lot that will help in that standard setting project. And also, um, as was mentioned, uh, we're continuing with the use of those papers to inform other standard setting projects, some very important ones around the auditor's uh, consideration of an entity's ability to continue as a going concern, a plan to issue a consultation paper in that area shortly after the new year, and a consultation paper in connection with the use of specialists, a very important part of audits where uh, both auditors use specialists manage and companies use specialists as there are more and more complex areas where specialists are needed. But again, information is needed, I think, to inform standard setting uh, based upon our past efforts to, to develop these projects, and I think the consultation papers will go a long way to do that. Um, in other areas, so we expect to ex uh, advance those projects during 2015 with the consultation papers. Some other important areas, as were mentioned, I think, by, by you, uh, <coughs> uh, Steve, were connection with the auditor's reporting model and advancements to, made in that area. We expect to go out with a reproposal based upon the, the many comments we received to the proposal uh, last year, as well as uh, to the information we received um, in the public meeting in connection with the audit reporting model, as well as observing developments around the world in connection with the audit reporting model. Taking all of that into account, we expect to put forth before the board in the first, by the end of the first quarter, uh, an, a reproposal in connection with changes to the auditor's report, particularly around the inclusion of critical audit matters in the auditor's report. Uh, additionally, we'll continue to work on uh, the, the, the transparency issue that, that was mentioned that has been a challenge dealing with some of the issues related to uh, consent issues required uh, in connection with uh, disclosure in the audit report of the auditor or other audit firms participating and we've said we'll look for opportunities or ways to potentially disclose that information in an alternative location outside of the auditor's report uh, if necessary to get that information to investors. But addressing those liability issues has, uh, and consent issues has, has been a challenge in, in moving that project forward. Uh, lastly, I think uh, I'd like to say is um, we, we have the quality control project on our agenda as well, which, which you mentioned, and we are working on that. Um, and, and we have a lot of projects on our agenda, and we want to make sure that we have, don't have too many, quite frankly, to continue to move the ball forward in all of these. And one thing we expect to, uh, to bring to a closure uh, in, in the near term would be the reorganization of PCOB standards. Uh, we put out a, a proposal on that and a supplemental request for comment. As we all know, the board adopted interim standards, and since then has uh, adopted uh, interim standards, which were the profession standards, and since then has adopted 18 permanent standards of the board, uh, AS1 through 18, which amended in many respects uh, many of the interim standards uh, completely or a number of many of them in, to, some, to some degree. The, the reorganization will put all of our standards together into one common format following the logical flow of the audit, making our standards much more usable to, to auditors, educators, and other users of our auditing standards. We expect to be able to uh, put that final proposal to adopt that reorganization before the board in 2015 as well. So we expect to accomplish a lot in standard setting uh, uh, during the upcoming year. Good. No, Pat, thank you. For that. It's very complete. Uh, Nirav, could you give us your uh, deliverables in 2015? Thank you, Marty. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Um, so consistent with the PCOB strategic plan, the Office of Information Technology will focus on helping deepen the use of data and technology at the PCOB. And I want to put out three examples. So in 2015, we intend to continue making improvements to our public website to make data more readily available. We intend to start building a registered firm portal that will help facilitate how inspections receives data from the firms, 
And then as we have in the past couple of years, we will continue to focus on enhancing the security of our systems and our data. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, there's tremendous interest, well, Claudius, and then I was going to say there's tremendous interest in the audit quality indicators, so we'll get to Greg after that. But Claudius, thank you. Thank you, Board Member Harris. This is Claudius Podesti from Enforcement. So as we state in the strategic plan, we will vigorously pursue and prioritize, um, as we are doing today in 2015, matters that what we believe involve elevated potential risk to investors and to the board's processes. Currently and going into 2015, we are particularly focused on matters involving multi-location audits, broker-dealer audits, and audits relating to internal controls over financial reporting. We'll continue to protect the board's processes by bringing non-cooperation cases where necessary. We expect to maintain or increase our inventory of open inquiries and investigations. And while we cannot predict the number of matters that we'll bring to the board for uh, disciplinary proceedings, uh, we, we expect to do that and to litigate multiple matters in 2015. Beyond the day-to-day -day investigative work, I expect significant resources to be deployed in several other areas. We continue to build out our broker-dealer program. We're strengthening our case identification processes and increasing our collaboration with the SEC and FINRA in this area, as well as expanding our own internal expertise through hiring and training. We're also making significant improvements to the division's use of technology. We're adopting a new software platform for review of our document productions, and we're implementing a new case management system that will be a useful management tool and a source of enhanced data for use in analyzing our activities. Um, we also are doing substantial work in providing and preparing a comprehensive report on international enforcement regimes to be issued by IFER's enforcement working group, of which I am the vice chair. As all of you know, uh, Board Member Ferguson is the uh, chairman of IFER, and we expect this report to be provided to IFER in connection with its plenary session in April 2015. So those are some of the things we're um, up to and doing to protect investors, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Greg? Greg Jonas from the Office of Research and Analysis. Our research division uh, has 32 people, and we do four things for the board. Uh, first, uh, we support rulemaking with economic analysis. We have five PhDs uh, who, for part-time, uh, support that activity, representing about three uh, full-time equivalents. The second thing is risk analysis. We have a risk team uh, that provides insight into inherent and audit risks. Uh, our customers for that are all the divisions, but in particular our inspection division who uses that insight together with their own knowledge uh, in making picks for uh, inspections around the world. The third area is uh, data and reports. We have a team dedicated to uh, obtaining uh, third-party data sources. Uh, taking internal data and putting all of it into databases and from those writing reports for all the divisions and offices. We write roughly about a thousand reports a year to support the day-to-day -day activities of the organization. And then finally we have a research agenda. Uh, our research agenda uh, we set each year. We are dedicated to working on things that directly inform policy and the things that you want us to be working on. So we will be coming to each of you in the next uh, couple of weeks with ideas of what we think in 2015 would be uh, an appropriate research agenda, taking your insight uh, and modifying the agenda uh, to your liking and then uh, proceeding accordingly. Uh, generally speaking, we, prov uh, we spend about 10% of our time on economic analysis, 30% of our time on risk analysis, 35% of our team's time on data and reporting, and 25% on research projects, including the Audit Quality Initiative. Thank you, Thank you very much. And, and Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, you know, I think we've touched on inspections uh, earlier on, uh, international <laughs> affairs as well, and, and, and we've all uh, talked about the center. So I appreciate very much uh, the outreach. I also think we do a terrific job in terms of our small business outreach. So uh, thank you very much. After a brief tour then through the uh, – through the deliverables. Uh, without further questions, all in favor of approving the recommendation on the strategic plan and the budget, please say yes. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Please say no. The vote is unanimous. That concludes the agenda. And there's no further business. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.